is the first Tuesday of the month. And what that means for those of you who've been here for a little while, that means we're getting ready to get back into some RPG elite philosophy for life. Started this new series last month. And so if you haven't seen the first part of this two part series for the first quality, you may want to go back and look at that video. I'll leave a link for that down in the description. Also, if you're new to the channel, you're not even sure what this whole RPG Elite thing is. This is a good place to start. I mean, we're starting at the beginning because this is only video two of the series, but I began the whole series a year and a half ago, about a year and a half ago, somewhere in there. And so there's a whole slate of 20 something plus videos about the RPG Elite philosophy. Actually, it wouldn't be 20 plus. I think it's like 16, 17. It might be somewhere in there. But you can go and watch that and that playlist will be down in the description below as well. Just if you want to go through that. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of videos in that series for you to get caught up on. But hey, I don't mind. Go ahead. Do your thing. If you want to know what the 411 is about this RPG Elite philosophy. Hey, what's up, everybody out there? My leets, what's going on? And again, if this is your first time coming to the channel, my name is Servant of Shiloh. This is RPG Elite. It's the place where I focus on putting the RP back in the RPG. RPG Elite philosophy for life. The RPG Elite philosophy has been very misunderstood. A lot of people had a hard time getting into and grasping exactly what I was saying about all of the different qualities until they got to the end and they were like, oh, now I understand what he's saying. So there was context that it needed to be built upon. That's why some of these videos are long. That's why some of the qualities are multi or multi-part because it's just a lot to unpack. Now what we're doing here is we're taking the RPG Elite philosophy and we're taking it to its very foundation and we're seeing how this applies to life. Now, a lot of people think that, oh, well, this is about, you know, tabletop RPG play style. No, it's not. What RPG Elite philosophy is, is a mindset that builds a certain kind of character that draws from true virtues and then makes that applicable to tabletop RPGs. Now you're gonna notice something when you get to the main meat of the video today. I'm dressed differently because I'm recording this on a different day. I'm just, I'll just let you know. I could have easily went, tried to fool you guys, put on the same clothes that I had, but I actually did want to make it distinct because when I made part one, I made it all at once. This actually was a part of part one. I just did the whole kit and caboodle because it was on my mind. I had everything written out. I was like, let's do this. In the first part, we set up how RPG elites look at things. But in the second part, we're looking at why somebody would play so excessively. So today I'm gonna to give you three reasons why, and I meant what I said in the last part of this video. This part is gonna sting. It might make some of y'all feel uncomfortable or as always, it might trigger some of you. Let's do it, let's get into this. And on the other side, as always, I got the question of the vid for you. So strap in and let's roll them. It has been said that discipline is choosing between what you want now and what you most want. Now, I'm going to keep coming back to this point several times in this video. But people who keep playing tabletop RPGs and they play them excessively or do anything excessively, you could be video games. It could be reading novels. It could be watching movies. It could be all of these things that is really not adding anything productive to a person's life or to anyone else's life. Then when we see this, we have to say or ask, what's going on here? Well, it's very simple. These are people who don't have self control. They have learned as normative to be a slave of their own desire. So they don't control that, they are being controlled. They're programmed by their own flesh. This is what happens with an addict, right? 
They're always chasing after that high. They are looking for that endorphin release and that dopamine hit. They're going for that feeling and they're controlled by it. It's a little bit of addictive behavior. And there are some people that are addicted to tabletop RPGs, but that's, a, that's another subject that I'll cover all by itself because that's the thing. And you might be struggling with this right now. My prayer in this video is that you are going to change things today because it is within your hands. It's something that we keep, we'll continue to talk about. Now, I like what it says again. We're going back to the Bible. We're going to get some wisdom here from the book of Proverbs. And this is what it says. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof is stupid. Now, I look at this video as a discipline kind of video. For those who might be stuck in this area of having no discipline, of not having control of their lives, but their lives controlling them. Well, if you look at this and then you take high offense to everything that's being said here and, you know, you pop off a comment and give excuses and all the rest of that, then, OK, you could do that. This was supposed to be for your own good, but because you're not taking it as such, what ends up being the case is that you keep doing the same things over and over, keep being in that place of mediocrity or less than, and then you end up looking stupid because you didn't take the reproof that was given to you. So don't do that if that's the case here. I'm not doing this to get on you. I'm doing this to help you. This is the reason why I do this. Many people like to blame other people for their predicaments in life, right? They blame others or some external thing. This is the reason why or whatever. They give that excuse and then they say, that's why it's legitimate. I'm not going to change and continue with an undisciplined life and then cry and whine and moan and complain about, well, I'm in this position because it's not. Stop crying and stop moaning. Nobody wants to hear your nonsense at that point. Just go ahead and live your like useless life because that at that point, that would be your fault. Stop blaming that on somebody else because it's not their fault that you have made the decisions that you've made to put you in the place where you are in your life right now. Now, another reason why people might be flocking or going to tabletop RPGs all the time or other things excessively is because they have no courage. No courage. They have no courage to live. Now, some of these things that I'm even talking about, even the no discipline one, it could be because people haven't learned. They haven't learned, but now we're in the age of information now. You can get anything that you actually want. And again, we're going back to this definition of discipline. Discipline is choosing between what you want now and what you want more. So the question is, do you have to change your want or going all the way back to the beginning? Do you have to change your priority? Most people don't have that kind of self-awareness or even sit down for a minute to evaluate their lives. And so what they do is they try to escape it. They can't handle it. So I'm trying to escape it. And the way that I'm trying to escape it is I'm going to a tabletop RPG. I'm going into fairy tale land over here. You know, so what I'll do is I'll play Traveler over here this day. And oh, I'll play the game that I refuse to mention by name on this channel over here. And then I'll play the game that I refuse to mention by channel over here again. And then maybe I might play this one shot over here. Wait a minute, in a week? That something is wrong with that. And many times it's people, people are ignorant that they're even doing it. They're running away from dealing with life. They have internalized being a coward. Now I know some of y'all might think that's harsh, but that's the truth. They don't want to deal with life. And so they want to have some kind of control somewhere. So they keep running to places where they can have some kind of control or to just escape. There was a young woman and she it, it's on YouTube someplace. And I forgot where I'd seen this. Um, I'll try to if and I'm making this before I make the other stuff, but I'll try to put it as a clip. But there was a young lady 
and she was working out but she had lupus right and lupus you know causes all kinds of inflammation on your organs and joints and all the rest of the stuff but she wanted to compete bodybuilding you know working out fitness and all the rest of that and she was explaining her story and she was like man there would just be mornings where i just couldn't move i couldn't get out of bed it would just i'd just be hurting so bad but i would do it anyway so she's working through all of this physical pain but she did it anyway why because she was willing to not have what she wanted now, which was just to lay down and not do anything, just to let the pain go away, but to focus on what she wanted more. She wanted to be in bodybuilding. She wanted to be fit. She wanted to be that. So that trumped all the rest of that. And she pushed through. And the underpinning of that is that she had the courage to do so. So some of you people out there might have some kind of physical ailment, but so does she. I've seen people who don't have arms and legs going out and making a difference in the world. And you wanna go up there and cry about your diabetes and not do anything as if I can't do anything because of this, stop lying. Cause I know plenty of people who have it, who are. See, you have no courage, that's what it is. And you have to actually admit that in the mirror. I have no courage. That's why I play tabletop RPGs all the time. That's why I'm always playing video games all the time. That's why I'm always watching another movie all the time. It's why I'm always doing other things. It's why I am a consumer more than I am a producer. I have no courage. You just have to look at yourself in the mirror and admit, okay, it just may be that when it comes to life, I'm a coward. I want you to listen to what Steve Mirabali, listen to what he said. It's gonna hurt, it's gonna sting, because it's true. He says this, action separates the heroes from the cowards. The achievers from the complainers, the successful from the mere dreamers, the happy from the envious. It separates those who rise to the challenge of their goals from the haters who cower in the shadow of stagnancy. So it could be that your obsession with tabletop RPGs or anything else right now is because, well, you just don't have it in you. You're trying to run from life, you just may be a coward, but stick around. You got a remedy for this, but we got one more to cover. And this one, well, I would say this one is probably the most important. Some of you that's been around on the channel for a while, you guys know that I had a friend who passed away couple years now and um heartbreaking just heartbreaking he was one of the guys who started playing tabletop rpgs with me back in the 80s and uh it was towards the end of his life within a few years of the end of his life we would have these long conversations on the phone and he would come over every once in the blue moon it was during one of our conversations that he came over and we were having one of these conversations but I asked him a question and I'm not gonna put all of his business out there, but he was having a rough time in life. And I asked him this question. I've asked many, many people this question. I said, Jim, what's the point? So Jim kind of looked at me, he was a little bit perplexed, didn't know what I was talking about and I knew that and I, went further and said, what is the point, not of you being here at my house, but of you being here in terms of existing? What's the point? And I remember this clear as day, he's sitting on my couch and he looks down at the ground, you know, he's kind of looking, he's pensive and you can see it in his eyes. And he looked up and he was the most honest out of anybody that I've ever asked that question. And he looked up and he says, I don't know. 
See, he was at least honest about he had no purpose. There was no point. And so this led to all other kinds of behavior, negative behavior. And this is what happens with mankind. When you have no purpose, then you will seek to fill it with something. And sometimes it's playing tabletop RPGs excessively. Uh, maybe it's trying to find purpose in, you know, being with other people that are just like you. Very narcissistic. You become very narcissistic when purpose is not there. Trust me. And sometimes you're still narcissistic when purpose is there because the purpose itself is very selfish. And we'll talk about this in a second. I want to give you a bit of encouragement, though. If you're on the older end of the spectrum and you answer that question like that, I want to give you some encouragement. It's not really me. I'm going to give it from C.S. Lewis. This is what C.S. Lewis said. You are never too old to set another goal or to dream a new dream. I want to, again, take my cue from uh, the Bible and talk about this thing called retirement. Because there are some people who have said to me, well, I'm retired, so I play tabletop RPGs. Uh-huh. All right. Let, let's go there. I want to go there. Uh, number one, there is no such thing biblically as retirement. No such thing. So even for you guys out there, you, you guys out there who are, you know, might be believers in the Bible and God and all the rest of that stuff, you call yourself Christians. Okay. There's no such thing as retirement. You don't see that in the Bible at all. People work until the day that he dies. As a matter of fact, listen, y'all, God gave Adam a purpose before he gave him a woman. And that should be a big hint for a lot of you young cats out there and maybe even some of y'all older cats. That's a huge hint. When you have no purpose, where in the world are you going to lead anybody? You lead them where? Nowhere. You have to have purpose. Now I've heard this other thing as far as people's purpose is that, oh, well, my purpose is that I just want to be happy. Really? That's your purpose. Your purpose is to be happy. But well, here's a problem with that. That's the reason why you can't fulfill it. And that's why you are excessive about whatever thing, tabletop RPGs, videos, again, uh, that's why you're, because it doesn't last. It doesn't last. Again, you need to shift your perspective. And I'm gonna let Shia LaBeouf, who figured it out, he figured it out, as far as shifting his perspective on his purpose being happiness. Listen to what he said. My purpose in life isn't to be happy no more. That's what my purpose used to be, which is such a aim in life. My aim in life in totality, my whole purpose for existing in life was to be happy. Mm -hmm. And that's and not that's not my purpose anymore. And now? Yeah, my purpose now is to be useful. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't make me useful to my wife to shame spiral on some shit like that. It makes me useful to my wife to show up for my wife and be stable for my wife when we take our kid to the children's hospital and she's tripping. And I happen to have a relationship with God that centers me at this point where I can be in a sit environment like that and be able to hold it down in that environment. So that's what my amends looks like today. Happiness is not a purpose. Happiness is a state. You have to be useful in order to have a purpose. So if you think your purpose is being happy, you'll never hit it because it can't be your purpose. And also, it, even if it could be your purpose, that is a very narcissistic way to live. I'm just living for me and what I want. Forget everybody else. Here's something about being useful. When you shift your focus off of you and shift your focus of starting to be useful, then you know what happens? Happiness follows. But also, when that is not there because of times and stress or whatever, usefulness will get you through those times Happiness will not because it will disappear. That's why you keep running because the happiness is not there now. Oh, I need to go and find happiness again. Let me play another tabletop RPG for the fifth time this week. No purpose. 
This is why when people retire, right, they figure I'm just going to do, I'm just going to do everything that I want and every, you know, and this, they spend their lives in uselessness. And then they figure out, man, this is really not living. I need to do something. And so they go and find themselves a job at Walmart being a door greeter because they got to do something because we as human beings are wired to have some kind of purpose and usefulness. And those who can't hang and deal with that are all discombobulated in their minds. They try to find it in other things. And it never lasts. But I tell you what, become useful and it'll trump happiness. But on top of trumping happiness, it'll bring it. Change your perspective. Shift how you look at things. Today could be the day where your life changes. It may be something as simple as don't play tabletop RPGs that much. Do something else that is more productive. Find a purpose and pursue it. Make it a priority in your life and use your time more strategically and wisely. I'm not saying don't play tabletop RPGs at all. I'm saying put it in its proper place in terms of your list of priorities and take the time that you gain from trying to run to that all the time, take that time and use it for something more productive. Now, that might sound very simple. Sometimes the simplest things are hard, especially when you have inculcated into your life something that is abnormal as normal, and you have done it for years. I want you to listen to what General, I think his name is, what is his name? General Carl von Clausewitz. Okay. And he's talking about war and life is a war. It really is. So listen to what the general said. I love this. Everything in war is very simple, but the simplest things are difficult. It might be hard for you to make these changes, these slight changes, it might be hard because like I said, you might have put yourself in a position to where you are in bondage to these things now. You might need help. Only you know if you need help, but you might need help getting out of that. All right, well then find help to get out of it. But maybe it's just you didn't know and now you do. You could change your life right now. You have been given the freedom and the blessing of choosing within the parameters that God has set for every human being on the planet. You can choose today to change your life. So put that tabletop RPG in its proper priority. And then you're gonna find that you'll probably enjoy tabletop RPGs more when you're not playing them all the time. And change your life to be more productive so that you can leave a legacy of usefulness for other people instead of always doing things for you and leaving this, leading this kind of hedonistic lifestyle of chasing after pleasure constantly. Do something for somebody else, do that on a regular basis and watch how your life and you change. RPG Elite Philosophy for Life. The end of part two. Now I can go on. I, I really could go deeper into this one quality. We're going to keep it there for right now because I think that is quite deep enough. Because I, if I went any deeper, then I'd probably just lose half of y'all. So I'm not going to do that. This is enough for us to ruminate and meditate on for the moment. So if you got any value out of the video at all, and it was of some use to you, then if you could do me a favor and let the YouTube algorithm know by giving me a little bit of love and 
crushing the like button. Also, if this is something that you wanna see more of and you wanna stick around, then go ahead, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. I come out with videos, God willing, every Tuesday and Friday, but understand something, it's not just all real talk videos, it's not what this channel is all about. I also give you tools, I give you tips and tutorials along with the real talk. So it's not just real talk, but it'll always be here. It'll always be here. So if you want more of that, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell on top of that. Let's get to the question of the vid. So of course, this was kind of a little rough on the emotions for some people, maybe. Maybe some of y'all was just going, oh, okay, man. You know, maybe it made you think, made you contemplate a little bit. So I wanna challenge you with something. I want you to think about yourself first. And if you fall into any of those categories, those three categories I just mentioned, which one do you fall into? And if you do fall into any of those categories, share with us, what are you gonna do about it? Or share with us what your struggles are in getting over it. And I am gonna read these comments because I wanna help in whatever way that I can. So if you are struggling to get over the hump in one of these three things, if you are being honest with yourself, let me know. Or maybe you don't feel like doing it in the comments, hit me up in an email. Very easy, you can go to rpgelite.us, hit the contact form, send me an email, I'll get back with you. This series is really meant to help people overall. It really is. Or maybe you might know somebody who is like this and maybe you just wanna help them. Yeah, just put that down there as well. You know, what? which one do they have? Which one category do they fall into? And maybe they might fall into multiples of that, which is obviously that would be a problem. But let's get together to help one another. And when we help one another in this regard, we will make our tabletop RPG experience more immersive and enjoyable. Y'all think that's just a tagline. I'm serious, it's a heart attack when it comes to that stuff. All right, that's, that's it, y'all. I love you, that's it. So that means I'm gonna have to go ahead and do my snaggle puss. No exit, And you guys got a game this week. Happy gaming. I pray it is an RPG Elite session. So until next time, God willing, on the fry to the day, I'm just going to have to say, peace, 5,000 leets. Yep, I'm outie.